You know, I don't really need to think twice about it, even with the broken glasses, if I ever actually go to New York Times and see you and know what kind of article we have. I actually read it really quickly. It's not really opinion. Are you crazy? I already actually read everything. It's really easy. Uh, probably, you know, um, the America's most favored infrastructure initiative was like in, in, in late 1960s, there was interstate and highway reconstruction, which was really actually laying down the roads to actually connect different states. Interstate commerce was one of the reasons why there was a recognition for antitrust law in the United States. But in the 1960s, especially like late 1960s, there was, you know, a um, massive interstate highway construction um, yeah, in New Orleans. And I mean, this is really starting for the those you know lines were starting from New Orleans, but you know this is really comprehending the reason surrounding the New all and Louisiana and Alabama and Mississippi and up until yeah, I think you know up until the mid state like you know Ohio, you know this is really a massive work. But almost in half a century later, you know, Joe Biden yesterday, he actually stood behind the podium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is really the city that has been already recognized as the in industry of uh, steel, metal, metal, and uh, and uh, what? Yeah, and coal, right? This is a really icon for industrial revolution in the United States. And now it's been very clear. The city really needs to renovate its system. Otherwise, it would have forever. It would be a ghost town. It would be a matter of time, unless there would be immediate reformation to change the paradigm of their business or their way of doing business. Then this would actually be gone, right? So it's an enormous amount of money. Uh, approximately four, forty mil, uh, forty, you know, forty billion, forty billion dollars are promised for what? Laying down or even beefing up the national highways. This is really the granular language, you know, speed. And it means, you know, this is a very, you know, fundamental work that would actually be done to prop up the national infrastructure because in airports and roads and also bridges, those type of a basic civil engineering works are being old-fashioned or demoted out of fashion right so they need to actually be reconstructed that's really the reason why there are a massive amount of budgetary allowances are being made so the monies are being allocated to specify the tasks so this type of recognitions are what were, I mean, uh, this type of recognitions were addressed by President Joe Biden at the time when he delivered a very notable speech in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's very easy. I don't really need to think twice about it. This kind of article is a really piece of shit. I mean, tell the truth, it's very easy for me to comprehend what was going on. Yeah, the Pittsburgh is really the chimney of the United States for eons, right? That was really where legendary tycoons like Carnegie Mellon led their economy, right? Now, this was, you know, once upon a time in the chimney of the United States and the and the factory floor of the United States. Whose focus was on coal, coal business, and the um, metal industry, steel industry. I have to actually you know make distinctions. Steel industry is a better right. 
I don't really need to think about it. It's really easy. What have I actually missed? We don't know what the total amount of the infrastructure bill is like a two trillion, but specifically forty billion dollar is the total sum of money that would actually eventually be spent to strengthen the roads and bridges across the nation. I mean, that's what has been said. It's really easy. No, I don't. I never actually had any difficulty. You want to actually read anything? Ah, I don't want. I don't want to actually read it. I have a Wall Street Journal. I have a, my Wall Street Journal, so I can actually read it. It's really easy for me to actually read it. Journalism, like no other. Oh no, I don't want to actually share the same story. So, you know, what it's been next is that is the United States is Israel, the country that is a driving the war supply chain forward. Why? Because, you know, what the U.S. Um, domestic market experiences a pretty much, you know, strong performance in recent days, especially by U.S. consumers. They were actually pretty much, you know, beef up with the governmental allowances. They actually pick up their checks issued by the Uncle Sam so they can actually splurge on some of the things they wanted to buy, but so far they couldn't, right? These are really the major factors that would eventually you know, prop up the performance of the economy in general. This is really the num uh, these are really the numbers that were actually collected by the um, Institute for Supply Chain and the Consumer a behavior analysis so it has been actually said that uh, more and more people are finally yeah stepping out of their house to s spend some money they would have liked to you know, assume their role as a consumer it's again wow that's a really great news because you know so far during the pandemic crisis american consumers are war strained yeah cash is strained and uh, they were actually under enormous pressure so they couldn't actually take on the role as a consumer right that was one of the reasons however the united states is simply waking up right now it's really about to unfall its wings just like you know butterfly waking up so the global economy is also expected to gain a momentum gain momentum from the united states it's really a positive news because uh, in I mean, in recent days there had been a series of tensions. There are serious tensions mounting up. So I mean, surrounding the war economy, especially the blockage of the Suez Canal, right? Because this is a major channel for supply and demand, and this type of a suspension would eventually wreak havoc on the global economy. That's what has been expected. However, the United States the domestic market is gradually opening up. Just like, you know, the fast rollout of a vaccine, the U.S. economy is about to get back to normalcy. So this is really a positive prospect, right? And it is really true, many of our indications are siding with this hypothesis u.s consumers are again opening up their wallets to purchase necessities and um even actually you know they've been enjoying um surplus of disposable cash on their hands because so far there were two cash strained there were two budget tight to anything outside their comfy zone so they were now venturing into some the terrain lesser and on, right? Yeah.
So that, that means, you know, if you are really a consumer in the United States, then you can actually probably buy a new dress. You can probably think about purchasing a new car. You know, these kind of a somewhat luxurious consumption could be expected. Then that would be the great um, booster. All right. We can definitely expect to have a booster effect. That's a really a positive sign for the global economy. More demand coming from the United States that means, you know, the global supply chain is just being lubricated. There is no greater lubricator than, you know, people with the U.S. dollars. They're going to pump money into the market. Then the factories are going to operate again. This is really a positive aspect. It, you know, technically the global economy was pretty much, you know, darkened. And it was actually in this gloomy phase because of the recent brouhaha with the Suez Canal. Yeah. But, you know, there was at least a shimmer of a hope. If you ever actually turn to the United States, you know, people are finally, yeah, taking a fancy to silly shopping. That's a really important. You don't actually blame those people who might actually go on binge shopping because they're the one who actually rescue the economy. Right then, investors are probably again deposit confidence in the market. Then they can go back to market in order to purchase more shares. Right? Isn't that so?